Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I am working in my Dina Wakely media journal and today I'm going to try to work on this page. I might bleed over to this page. We will see how it goes. I'm going to be working with some tissue paper, with some texture paste, and with some watercolors. So stay tuned for that. I will link everything that I use down below. Otherwise, Let's go. You know that feeling when you have a plan and then you immediately change the plan? Well, that is what happened with this art journal page. So I did have a plan to use texture paste and watercolor and tissue paper, which you see right now. Um, the only one of those that actually ended up on this page was this tissue paper. So I am applying it over both pages with some clear gesso. This is the Liquitex gesso. It's not my favorite because it's a little bit gritty, but it actually works pretty well in this particular art journal and I'm being really heavy-handed because I want this to stick on really well. So what happened with this art journal page is that I started it and then put it aside to dry and then did a take 10. And if you don't know, on every um, or every Thursday morning I do take 10s where it's a live YouTube and we just play with supplies and we try new techniques. It's not necessarily coming up with a finished product. Um, so I did this and then I put it aside to do the take 10 and the take 10 last week or the week that I was recording this was about acrylics and watered down acrylics and I ended up just totally changing my mind on what I was doing. So um, you can see I ended up tearing around this tissue paper. I was going to cut it nice and neat but I actually really love the tearing and I should have done that from the beginning. So tearing it around the gesso that I used will help prep these pages. So so that'll help keep the denim from super soaking through and just give it kind of a consistent uh, base for the mediums that I'm going to put on top. Then I picked up, sorry for the shaking camera, then I picked up this butterfly stencil, one of my favorites in my stash. I'm going to use my pixie spray so that I can secure it down really nicely. And instead of texture paste, of which I was running short, I actually pulled out white gesso. And you can see I'm going to be pretty heavy handed. This is a thick white gesso. This one I believe is also liquid. Nope, this one is Art Basics, which is the brand that I really like. And so I'm being really thick with the white gesso, using it as kind of like my texture paste, if that makes sense. So it is going to leave a pretty good texture. I'm like I said, heavy handed going over this stencil. I'll pull it up. Um, I do let it dry. I took out all of the drying moments in this video just because it would be forever long if you just watched me use my heat tool. But in between each stage, I did let it dry. Um, I have my butterfly on. Now I'm just coming and being really messy with the gesso. I want it to have lines. I don't want it to even. I want it to have texture because I had just played in take 10 played with texture, was loving it, and kind of wanted to continue on that path. All right, so at this point I have let everything dry thoroughly. I'm using these plastic cutting boards. These are from the Dollar Tree. I think you get two for a dollar, and I use them all the time in my art journal just to make sure I don't have too much bleeding. And I'm gonna pick up some Jane Davenport acrylic paints. I put it in my little paint tray, which happens to be a double egg tray, and then I'm adding a ton of water. And I even sprayed water directly on my page because I want to see the colors flow. You could have done this with watercolor. The colors wouldn't have been so vibrant, especially once I get to the denim, but it, it works with the watercolor. I'm running low on this magenta pink and I don't think they make it anymore, which makes me super sad, but I'm gonna add it on the opposite side. Again, plenty of water and again, letting it flow. It's all kind of flowing towards the middle of the butterfly. And this is one of the few times that it turned out exactly how I hoped. With that gesso completely dry, it was really interesting to see how the paint flowed in the channels of the butterfly, if that makes sense. It was so cool just to watch it kind of flowing. I dried in between and then I decided to just 
keep going with the color. So I'm gonna go with a lighter blue um, that I accidentally put in the wrong little tray, adding water and again, spraying water on to my surface just so that I am sure that it will move freely. You can see tons of water. See how quickly it fills up that space. It did get caught in the gutter of the page. I had to kind of urge it to continue over the top just so I wanted to see those flowy marks, those water marks. And I, it just gives a different feel than watercolor would have. And I'm super happy I went with acrylic. I was super pleased with the vibrancy of the colors and with how consistent it was over these two different pages. Next will be some lime green, which is a little bit unexpected, but that's okay, changing it up. And I will add that in over here in this corner. And you can see I'm just kind of working my way around. The lime green made some super cool patterns. And it because I had already dried the pink, it did not mix too well, or it didn't mix poorly, if that makes sense. It didn't get muddy, which I liked drying that all the way and, and I'm just going to continue around. I have this gorgeous coral color that I'll add in the upper right hand corner. I end up having to come back. I I was a, I was afraid it was going to be too much with the coral and so I was really light handed with it just adding a little bit here and there and then I come back later on and add a little bit more just because I was really pleased with how the color was turning out. I love using water in my art journaling I love watching the mediums kind of just flow and it takes some control out of your hands, which can seem really scary and is very contrary to my normal personality. But that's why I think it's so important for me to be doing it in the art journaling because art journaling really um, challenges me in a lot of ways. I'm very much a control person. I like having control over what I'm creating. I like having control over pretty much all the things. That's just a little insight into my personality. So when I use water, I, I can no longer control it. And so that is just fun for me. All right, my last little color here, I'm adding it in. I'm trying to kind of blend. Sorry, I got a little off screen here. I didn't want any white space. So as I am drying this, I'll actually do some blending and drying at the same time, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But you'll see in just a moment, I'm actually holding the heat tool with my left hand, adding a little bit more color with my right hand, wanting those to blend just a little bit and to move, always wanting, wanting it to have some movement and not just be like a stagnant little block of color. And then I do the same thing over on the right side where I want to add, I just see some little parts. The coral just looked too blocky to me. So I wanted to bring it into the pink a little bit more, blend that area, more water, more movement, more interest. Um, so that's, I went for it. I just added and added and added and did the water so that I could see the movement. And I am so pleased with this background. I was super tempted to just leave it like this, but then I was inspired to add a few more layers here and there. Okay, I'm all done with the water for now. This is pretty much dry. I'm going to now use another cutting board actually that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I like this one. It's um, I cut it down into these little squares that I used to use for washi tape, but actually I like using them for art journaling. It has a smooth side and then it has this side that has this like grid ridge thing. And I like it because it doesn't go on smoothly, which is just kind of a mixed media tool. There's smooth, there's rough, and then there's these patterns that you can kind of put together and I I enjoy just the roughness of it. So I'm going to use the scraping technique to add some gold around the edges of the butterfly um, the sections of the background that are not where the butterfly stencil was. And I will use the gold and then I'll also use like a silvery white color. It's not white. It definitely has a metallic feel. Like I said, all of these are Jane Davenport um, acrylics. I will link her new acrylics. I don't have them yet. I'm assuming that they are similar and I like that the new ones at least you can buy bottle by bottle and the other ones you had to buy them in sets. So now I'm going to add some white again. I just feel like it brightens it up. I love the texture. This this page feels like it's all about texture and I love that the butterfly is in the background but popping but not. It's just this page might quickly be one of my very favorites in this book. I kind of wish I could take it out and frame it. I don't think I can, um, but I will certainly be enjoying it for a while. 
At each stage, I was very tempted to leave it exactly how it was, but then I would just get another idea, something that was calling to me. Um, this is a set of stamps from By the Well for God. I will link it if I can find it in their shop, or else I'll just link a new set of butterfly stamps. And I thought the butterfly was in the background, but I wanted the theme of butterflies to be coming out a little bit more. So I decided to add some stamped butterflies. I'm using my Versafine Onyx black ink. I do have to let my art journal sit out and dry a good long time. There is a lot of layers on here. The ink is not necessarily going to dry right away on this particular medium on top of the gesso and all the things. Um, I'm coming back in with a smaller butterfly. I loved the idea of these new butterflies. For me, butterflies always signify a new beginning, a new start. I love them for spring. I love butterflies almost as much as I love rainbows. And so I wanted them kind of flying across the page. And then I pulled out an older Illustrated Faith Alpha set. This one is called Top Knots Alpha, I believe. And I'm going to use that to stamp out the word trust and I've sped this up a good amount so one letter by letter I'm doing trust when you stamp on this much mixed media in the background you're not going to get perfect stamps but I did go with a nice bold alpha so that even in its imperfections you'd be able to still read what it has to say I could have handwritten it out but I really the stamps were calling my name this like I said this was an art journal page that just kept coming and coming and I loved it I like it it wouldn't stop. Um, on this part, I'm using super tiny little block alpha stamps from Michaels that I've had for years. And I am individually kind of stamping out the phrase, trust in the beauty of new beginnings, which is going to be the title for this page. Once I finish this stamping, then this art journal entry is done. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I have linked the supplies that I could find down below. Heads up, some of those are affiliate links. It doesn't cost you any more, but it does go a long way to supporting this channel. And speaking of support, thank you so much to my YouTube community members. If you are interested in finding out what kind of perks they receive as YouTube community members um, as scrappy friends then check out the description box and there is a link that you can find to join this channel. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always keep it creative. <laughs>